Welcome to another training offered by the North Carolina Office of State Fire Marshal. Today in our Ask Vince show, we're going to be going over simple repels. Vince, what kind of devices can we use to repel with? Well, there are all kinds of different devices uh, that you can repel with. Brake racks, uh, figure eights, tubers, there's all kinds of different devices that people use to, to repel with. But a couple of the most common are the figure eight and, of course, the brake racks. Even within the brake racks, you can see there's a considerable amount of difference. Carney's holding a micro CM, CMI rack, and I've got a full-sized SMC brake rack. And as you can see, there's a considerable amount of difference. Uh, although the basic operation is the same, the way that you load these and the way that you use them is slightly different. So you need to become very familiar with the specific piece of equipment that you're actually using. Vince, what would be the advantage of using a, a mini brake rack versus a, a larger one? Well, just the, the compactness of it, the size, the fact that it's not so large. Uh, when you're using this, you attach it to a carabiner, which is attached to your harness, and it gets further and further away from you. With the larger uh, brake racks, that hand can get really far. And for a smaller person, a uh, person with short arms, very small statured person, uh, they can have difficulty, especially if they do a self belay with a Prusy cup above it. You can see how that could get a long ways up there to actually reach it. So this CMI mini brake rack, allows that all to be compacted down. Uh, this one here actually is configured with two of the hyper bars which give you a little more versatility. You can add friction with these uh, by just placing one of the hyper bars in or you can add the second hyper bar in, uh, especially if you're working with a rescue load. And these are actually generally use rated so they can be used in a rescue load operation. When we're repelling, before we actually rig this, um, what do you think about always having a, a belay line or what are some things we should do versus just hooking to a main line and repelling over? Yeah, for safety's sake, we always want to want to have some sort of a belay. The ideal situation is what you got here, Carney. You've got a secondary rope with a belay person over here that you're going to communicate with. Another option would be above, like I already spoke of, above the repel device, whether it's a figure eight or a repel rack, you could put triple wrap prusix, which you would mind with your hand on the way down and if you were to slip and let go of it of course the idea is it would grab and stop your fall. Uh, a third option which could also be used in conjunction with either or all of the above options would be to have a other rescuer if they're able to access from below and they just pull on the lower end of your rappel line and that's going to do the same thing that you're going to be doing with your control hand in your lower back. It'll create friction on the device we're using and stop us in our track. Exactly. Your hand doesn't have to be within two or three feet. It can be down at 50 feet or 100 feet below us. In the training scenario where we're trying to control our environments, what would be the best belay? I think what we've got set up right here, uh, having a separate rope and a separate belay person, just in case we had a problem. Uh, one real big benefit to this is if your hair or if your clothing or something else got tangled in it, Rather than you having to worry about actually dislodging that, this allows us the option of adding another rope to that one with triple wrap prusiks or tying a knot or whatever, and we can actually transfer your load to this, we can break that loose, and we can lower both down, and you'd basically be converting this to your main line, and where you're knotted off, you would go ahead and tie it off just like you were working, and we would lower that rope, and it would actually turn into a belay. So you would continue down, even in that situation with a separate rope as a belay. Well, with this mini rack, let's get started with it. What's the first thing we need to do to be able to rig it properly? Well, depending on the way it's configured, you need to figure out exactly which end you clip into. That may sound very, very simple, but if you look right here, it's a very different configuration. On this one, you're clipping into the U in the end of it, and it uses dual nuts on the end. And on this one, it actually has a, a bent and welded eye, and that U is actually the top part. So they're 180 degrees off in the way that you use them. There again, you need to be very familiar with what you're doing. With this particular version, you're always gonna be clipped in right here. This is gonna be your clip in point and be attached to your harness. One nice thing about this is it allows you to clip in prior to hooking the rope up. From this point, all we're gonna do is we're gonna form a bite in the rope and we're going to pass in right behind the top bar, which is also the hyper bar. And we're going to come up and we're going to fold this first slotted bar into play. And when you pull on this, it's going to lock it in. 
you're going to slide the second, which is actually the lower hyperbar, into play, and we're going to form another bite, and we're going to force it up through, and we're going to flip this other bar over and put it into play. Now we've got all the bars, which gives us the maximum amount of friction from the bars themselves. But as we stated earlier, you can take your lower hand and bring the rope under and come across this top hyper bar, which gives you the equivalent of another bar. And then if need be, you can actually hook into the lower bar. And you take advantage of all of these if you're gonna lock off. Okay. Well, as far as a left-hander from a right-hander, I'm left-handed. So I like my rappel rope to go out the left side. However, with this, it can be used either way without switching, can it? Exactly. This is another advantage over the, uh, the figure eight. The figure eight, of course, you've got to place the lower line uh, on the hand that you want to be the brake hand. On this one, you would steply, simply just step over the rope and you can move it from one side to the other. There's no, there's no uh, left or right handedness to it. This right here, of course, is gonna be riding above uh, and you can still work with it on either side. Okay. In the training scenario, we want to make sure all our commands are correct. So at this point, before we even got to the commands, it would be good for a second instructor to check our rigging before we would go over. And in doing that, it would be simply making sure that the belay line is secured in place, carabiners being locked, and also with the main line. At this point, the, the repeller would want to make a command on belay and should hear something back from the belayer which would say belay on, and that lets them know that the person has belayed the line and the safety is in place. The second command would be on repel, in which the belayer would say repel on, and at that point it would be safe to go ahead over the side. Now that we've checked our rigging and we're ready to repel, Vince, would you go back and be my belay person? Sure will, Carney, no problem. On belay. Belay is on. And the slack is now taken out of the belay line, which is holding pressure on from our safety. On repel. Repel on. And at this point, it's time to have some fun. One thing we want to do when we're getting ready to repel over is try to, to, to keep ourselves at an angle, a comfortable angle, as we're starting to go over. Because at this point, sometimes it becomes a, a very um, a, a dangerous spot in which a person may invert. So when your lines are coming uh, above or even, it, it's always helpful if that belay line's up a little bit higher, which gives you that thing. And the other thing is to keep good footing as we go. So we make this first transition very slowly, getting our foot in place on both sides, keeping our legs apart just, just uh, at a comfortable level, and then we start to repel down. All right, earlier we showed you how we stop and lock off with a figure of eight. Now I'm gonna go, go through showing you how we do it with a mini brake bar. As you see, we have friction going through our, our brake bar, which is holding me in place, and I'm not having to use a lot of strength on the bottom of this rope with just my body weight. The way we're gonna lock this off is I'm gonna complete this round turn here around the bottom pin, come up to the top hyperlink, and the rope's gonna go in place there, and then I'm gonna come back across the bottom hyperlink and as I pull those together, you'll see that all of this tightens up. Everything pulls together and it's putting friction in place, which is going to hold my body in place. So I come across the bottom one. And at this point, I'm going to make a big bite. And I'm going to go around the device, form two half hitches to lock it in place or I could do an overhand knot to lock it in place. Now that I've got those secured, I'm free to move around with my hands or move around if I needed to move to the basket, help a victim or whatever I needed to do. When we're ready to release this, we're gonna go back and undo our two half hitches. And as we start to loosen the second one up, we wanna find our rope as it is coming out, grab pressure on the bottom of the, that bottom hyperlink, holding us in place, get all the slack out of the way, and then I'm slowly going to start, as I go across this top hyperlink, what's going to happen is I'm starting to pick the pressure back up on my body, and now back to my left hand, now I'm free to repel again. 